It's Miniature Monday, and do you know where your miniatures are? I have a whole gaggle of them for you here. I got the townspeople and accessories from the uh, WizKids Unpainted line. Um, there's a whole lot in here. Um, I'm really excited to open this up. Even more excited to paint them. Um, it does say it's primed, paint ready right out of the box. Um, yeah. I have opinions about that, but you guys already know that. If you don't know that, check out some of the previous videos. I'm going to run through the whole table of contents of everything that is in this, but I just want to let you know that I paid $59.99 for it, American, and uh, yeah, here's what we got here. And this time, it does, it does appear to have the correct contents on it. I got shafted with the campsite. It provided half the crap that the box said it had, and then... um. It was cool because WizKids offered this, hey, look, you know, go ahead and just send us, you know, take a picture of the receipt or what have you. Well, <laughs> I lost the receipt, so I still got shafted. And, of course, they're not going to just dole out a bunch of miniatures without some sort of proof of purchasing it. So there was that. So still shafted. Anyway, back to this. More happy stuff. I got the contents. This contains one male blacksmith, one female blacksmith. One male actor, one female actor. Wouldn't that be an actress? Not sure. Anyway, one male simple merchant, one female simple merchant, one male thief, one female skinner slash tanner, one female sheriff, one male bailiff to whack his peepee -pee with. I got one male diplomat, one male monk slash friar slash town drunk. I got one female fisher. I have one male bandit with crossbow, one male bandit with a dagger, a male pirate, a female pirate, a male executioner, a male assistant to said executioner, one anvil, four hammers, one stump, because, you know, you need one of those in a town, <laughs> one suit of armor, one forge, one forge coal piece, we'll get to that later, because that's actually what I'm more excited about, two pairs of tongs to hold this in place while my shaky ass hands make it to where you can't read this one chain i have uh two market stall canopies which are basically the reason i bought this <laughs> because uh you know the uh you know, the mantic games one sucked okay i got two market stall shelves a hollowed out log you know because you know you see those in the middle of town an interior treasure pile, hollowed out log lid, a tanning rack, a scraping board, a bellows, and one trowel. So you can feed the barbarian's mother or trough. Anyway, so um, at this point in time, I like to mention how I usually keep a knife right here to open stuff. But I can't seem to... Oh, wait. No, here it is. So, um, the opening part of this is brought to you by Benchmade, who makes the, basically the finest knives in the world that you can somehow pick up at a garage sale for $10. That's right. I picked up an automatic Benchmade knife for $10 at a garage sale. So, uh, yeah. Love those garage sales. So, that managed to open that for me. So, let's see what we got over here. So, the forge coals light up. Yes, they do. So that was the reason why I was kind of giddy with this. So, er, so let's get this out of the way. And so we got stuff taped to the bottom of this. That's all right. So let's get to that first. So this looks like it is part of the market stall or the market canopy. So... The, the funny thing about Miniature Monday is I open up all the stuff and uh, the next day is Trash Tuesday where I pick up all the debris from everything I opened. So in this bag, it looks like we have all the all these bases that I hate. Um, speaking of which, um, they went and did it. They actually uh, they actually marketed all those bases. Um, you can buy them on, on their own. 
So uh, these uh, really thin bases that I do nothing but complain about that I have an abundance of, you can actually buy these by themselves now. So uh, they have those. Uh, look at them. At, look for them at your fine local gaming stores or wherever WizKids products are available. So there we have the market stall, which I think looks 30 fucking times better than that Mantic crap that I got. Um, it's not warped all the shit. Um, it is a little bit. I mean, you know, with within some sort of, you know, spectrum, it, it is a bit warped. But, um, and then you're going to notice the warpage here along the bottom. You know, how it kind of just tilts up. So, but not as bad as the Mantic stuff that look like, I don't know, your baby brother or child put it in the fucking microwave for two minutes. So it doesn't look like that at all. It doesn't look like a, you know, a Salvador Dali painting, you know, or yeah, just close your eyes, use your imagination. If you don't know who Salvador Dali is, just fucking Google it. Anyway, so we have that. Um, so it comes with two of those. So I'm really excited about that because this gives you a good opportunity to go ahead and build that town center that you always wanted. You know, where, you know, you do everything you can to get your adventurers to go and, and take that hook and do that adventure. And, uh, you know, and go save whoever it is they need to save or complete whatever quest they need to, qu uh, to complete. And they'd rather fuck off in town. And, well, <laughs> does Wiz Kids have the box set for you? It's right here. <laughs> so, you know, we should just, they should just rename this thing quest hook failure <laughs> box one <laughs> you know it's just like i'm gonna steal something from the guards you know and yeah if there's any girls there i want to do them you know th th this is this is that box so uh yeah feel feel free to pick up this um let's see i'm just having a little bit of trouble trying to open this up so that's why it's so much off camera yammering going on right now so oh shit and that's what i thought was going to happen and it happened so it's that tape always leave it to whiz kids to package their product like you know pretty much like one of your grandparents that uses a bunch of tape on christmas you know what presents come from them because well <laughs> There's two rolls of tape keeping it together. So there's that. Okay, so I'm going to try to adjust some camera stuff going on here so we can get as much of this as possible. So it's packaged really well. I don't see a whole lot of warpage for anything except for what I mentioned earlier with the market stall on the bottom of it being a little bit warped. Um, that's just complaining because, um, well, I mean... It's my job to, well, not my job, you guys don't pay me, but I critique things. And so you guys click on these for said critique to determine whether or not you want to buy them or not. So there's that. Um, you definitely don't watch these videos to look at my pretty mug because I never show it. So there's that. So what I'm going to do is start lining this stuff up. So I have some market stalls back here. I've got two of those. i got the racks that usually should probably go in them. Um, but that's all right. We're just going to put them off to the side so you can see what they look like. Um, and then let's see what else we can get out here. Let's go. This, I'm assuming this is like the stretching board for the leather. So you're going to have your, your tanner or your leather worker over there. Um, not really wanting to stay up on its own. Um, so pretty much what I would probably do is just take this, dip it in the pegs in a little bit of boiling water, spread them apart a little bit, and then put them in ice water. And that will make it a little bit more stable for you, so that will stay up for you. Um, let's see what else I got here. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the tanner. It's either that or... Or somebody told her to do something to the wash rag, and she's quite puzzled. But I'm assuming this is a tanner. And let me get this focus uh, straight on this, because this is uh, starting to annoy the hell out of me. You come here for quality videos, and, uh, well, right now you're not getting them. So let's... Okay. 
I do like kind of the Neanderthalic face that she's got going on there. Um, but she is a working lass and she's working that leather. So um, I never really see leather worker miniatures before. So I'm happy to see that, believe it or not. Um, it could be a bad miniature and it would still be a great one at this time. This is probably a grocer, I want to say. She's like a, you know, she's holding a basket. Um, I, that's what I would do. I would put her in basically like the marketplace setting where she's just that uh, particular consumer over there. So we'll put that over there. It looks like we have a some sort of tanning rack here. That will paint up nicely. Um, a little bit of warped stuff going on here. But like I said, that's something a boiling water trick will do quite nicely with. And still way better than any of the magic crap. Sorry, they just really pissed me off. I was really looking forward to their stuff and it was just bad. Uh, looks like we got a weapon salesman. Um, could possibly even be a blacksmith, but I don't think so because there is a blacksmith that I saw there with a hammer. So, uh, yeah, there's that. So, we got that. I want to say it's a fisherman because, or, or I'm sorry, fisher, female fisher, uh, because we got the little pole hook there. So, and she's got what appears to be a fisher hand. So there is that. Um, great for those coastal town campaigns. I have a trough for the barbarian's mother. Uh, so they, she has something to eat and drink from. We'll put that over there. Um, yeah. Barbarian players, I would apologize to you, but you wouldn't understand. Okay, we got it's basically an armor display. So you could put that where uh, fine armor is sold in your town. That is a great addition. Um, don't really see a whole lot of those. Uh, what else we got here? This was what I would assume be the female metalsmith. Are you looking to protect yourself or deal some damage? So she's got that, and I like how she's got just the blade. She doesn't have a blade with like the handle or the tang, or, or I mean, the, or the tang's right there on the blade. She doesn't have the handle or the or anything else on there, the, you know, the hilt or anything. She just has the blade in her hand, and I really do like that attention, where this is just a raw blade. You just see the blade and the tang there, and she's working on it with a hammer. I think that's awesome. I don't really see that done very much. And so when I see stuff like that that's pretty accurate, I want to make sure to call that out um, as much as I like to complain about stuff. This would be the male um, metalsmith or blacksmith. Um, let's see here. Yeah, he's kind of he's kind of got the hipster beard, but he's kind of got the skullet going on, you know, the little bit of the party in the back, but Phil Collins in the front. So, you know, a little bit of that going on. But uh, that would be our male counterpart to the blacksmith. Be honest, I like the female blacksmith model better because of that detail they spent on that, that blade. I'm sorry, but it's just, it's seldom done. Bellows. This is probably some of the best bellows I've seen in a miniature for a while. So I really do like that. Um, that's pretty cool. So I give that a, a, a thumbs up, um, like my opinion matters for anything. Um, this guy... I don't know. You see, the funny thing is I went through the whole contents, the table of contents. I don't know who, who the bloody hell this guy is. I want to say, I don't know, he's got like, I want to say the diplomat. Because he's got like his satchel right there. He's got a cane. You know, it looks like he's wearing kind of a garb from like another land. So I, I really want to say that's the diplomat model. So uh, there's that. I got, well, it looks like a bandit with a crossbow. You know, stereotypes, he's got a hoodie on. So uh, yeah, bandit with a crossbow. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty good model. Um, I like how he's kind of hunkered over. I don't know if you can see that. He's kind of hunkered over, but he's literally at the same height as another model that's standing up straight. <laughs> Meaning, for a bandit, this guy's freaking tall. So there's that. Let's see what else we got going on here. Let's get out of that. We have, I want to say that is probably the female 
Sheriff. She looks like a woman of the law. Female pirate. I like the detail in the dress. That's really, really a good touch. Um, it's going to take me forever to show all these miniatures because there's so fucking many of them. Let's see here. We have... Looks like a guard. But he's got like a cudgel or a cudgel and a lantern. So, you know, there's that. Um, maybe even a bailiff. I'm not quite sure. Let me just stand up real fast because I was kneeling during this video and, well, it fucking hurts. So, I'm going to say that's a bandit with a dagger. So, kind of like the tunic action that's going on right there. So, um, that's that's pretty cool. Um, let's see what else I got going on. I think this next one is going to be the male pirate. This guy looks surly. I like him. He's, uh, yeah, he's out for some business. And, uh, yeah, no, I really like that. It's a really cool uh, pirate miniature. Now, some of these are represses from earlier sets. And I'll get to those in a bit. And I think the pirates might be one, but I just can't remember because I, I don't know if I got them or not. There might be like a tub of stuff here that I just haven't seen yet. This would be the actor, the male actor. Looks like he's about ready to take the bow after a successful performance. Okay, and then what else have we got here? It looks like we have the female actor with the skull in the hand. To be or not to be, that is the question. Oh no, wait, never mind. The bloody skull in the hand is, Alas, poor Yurik, for I knew him well, Horatio. That's right. Okay, get a little bit of Shakespeare there with you. This would be the executioner. Now this is pretty much what I was talking about when it comes to like some of the duplicates. Because I have this from another set, and there's a head block and a head basket that comes with them. So there's not the head block and the head basket for this set. So you're just getting the executioner and it's the exact same model pose um, mold as the one before. And then also the torturer's assistant also came in a, um, also came in a, uh, a box by itself as well. I think it came with, I want to say it came with some of the torturing implements that the whiz kids came out with. Um, you know, for the dungeon room stuff. So, we got that. Um, oh, that looks like the thief. So we have that. This would be the cleric or the friar, which kind of has a beard like Grizzly Adams. You know, just kind of up there in the mountains by himself, minding his own business. Accused of a crime that he didn't commit with uh, nothing but his old bear friend Ben to keep him company. So there's that. Uh, let's see what else I got going on here. So I got this is kind of weird. So this stump here is textured on the top and on the bottom and all the way around it. So it's and it's a different texture on both sides. So you just can kind of choose kind of what to do. You can probably put like draw something on one to be some sort of druid's little altar and then just have a normal stump on the other side so i i do like the uh i do like the uh, potential for that and uh you know how you can do lots of uh cool things with that so anytime you get multi-use out of something that's cool so this one was a little weird because you had the cap that came right off this the stump you take it off, and there is a stash of valuables inside. So there's some coin purses, and it looks like uh, like a small box, like a small like a small strong box, and uh, all sorts of good stuff in there. And then you just put it right back in there, and then it's kind of notch really clever. So there's only one way you can put that lid back on there. And then uh, there you go. Um, I thought that was a pretty clever idea. Not sure what sort of purpose it would serve in the middle of a town. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, 
there's an anvil. Now the clever thing to do to the anvil is probably put it on top of this stump over there. And then I got all sorts of really little tiny um, <laughs> hammers and stuff that came with this that are probably gonna fly everywhere as soon as I take the tape off of it. So let me just, oh, actually this worked out a lot better than I thought it would. Okay, so. <laughs> Something comes or something goes according to plan. <laughs> At Dr. Som miniature Monday first. So it was all stuck to the tape. So all I had to do is peel the tape off and they all came out. So you don't have to worry about stuff flying anymore. I got some chain here. I got two pairs of tongs there. Um, I got about four different types of hammers. So that's all really cool. So I'm just gonna put that there. And now what I was excited the most about. So we had this forge here and it, it was supposed to glow. So let's let's take a look at what's going on with that. So I think this pops out. I mean, it's loose in there. I mean, it wants to come out. The bottom part doesn't pop off at all. There's no give to that. So this puppy has got the, no, wait, oh, oh, I was wrong yet again. Yeah, again, oh, and there's a tab in here. You know what that tab means? It means the battery's included. Yes. So where's the switch? Oh my God, it's like the worst light ever. No, no, don't ruin this for me. It's that is your light. Which means you really gotta do a number on this and paint it real, like paint it red and make it look really cool with the translucent stuff for it to even look cool. So um there's that. I mean it's not it's not a deal breaker, just it's gonna be a lot more work to make it look cool. So the bricks on the back of this is really cool. I think it gives it a really unique shape. And I love how it's just packed with mud and clay and stuff around here to give this this forge like, you know, some sort of character. But um, yeah, I, I'll have fun, I'll, I'll paint this. I'll paint the hell out of this and I'll have a lot of fun with it. And uh, I'll have it show up in a video a little bit later and uh, you know, see what you guys think of it. So anyway, that is pretty much what we got for the village set. Here, the uh, the townspeople and accessories set from Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. So it was a pretty big set. So I enjoyed it. Worth sixty dollars or fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Um, you know, you basically got a whole town in the box, and your adventures always go to your adventurers always go to town in these games. So you are going to get a lot of use out of this. Um, basically how I rate value on something is essentially how useful it is and how much of it you get for a price. Um, these miniatures come in two packs for the most part. You know, the WizKids Unpainted come in two packs for, you know, $5 or $5.99 a piece. So, I mean, you're looking at uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and then a you know, and then a bunch of this other stuff. So I mean, it kind of evens out. You're not getting a huge price break. I really want these these shops, these market stalls. I want these to come out in their own boxes because I will buy a ton of those. Like if you thought I went crazy on the dungeon doors for this for this line, <laughs> wait until those market stalls come out in a pack by themselves. Um, you're never gonna find them because I'm gonna buy all of them. Uh, sorry, um, but I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, it's just I want to set up a whole town square with those goddamn things. Anyway, at this time I think I'm running a little bit long, but we had a lot of miniatures to go through. So thank you for watching and bearing with me for this uh, train wreck of a video. And um, as always, um, hit the subscribe button if you want to see future content like this. Thanks for watching.